Mikhail, part two. Thank you so much for your time. Epic setup you got there. How are you doing, man? Dude, I'm killing it. I am killing it. I'm feeling really good. Um, you know, we're innovating. Things are moving. I'm feeling like an artist again. Ooh. Um, man, it's it's a crazy world. It's a crazy world we live in. And I'm so excited to catch up with you, brother. Thank you for having me on. Easy. Uh, let's kick it right on off. It's good to get started. I've been getting so many messages like, when's the part two coming out? Because part one, we did like an hour and then like, oh, I got to go. Bye. And it was like, all right, let's do another one. <laughs> like it. What, Dude, my friend was trolling me. My friend was like, was like, are you ever going to do it? Are you ever even going to do it? And I'm like, you know what? Dude, man, what's going on? Yes, we are. Did you, did you get any tats since then? Any new tattoos? I have not gotten any new tattoos. I've been on a spiritual journey into the self to discover what peace looks like without acquiring a bunch of new stuff. Oh, um, so, and I found it. So I feel good. Damn. Yeah. How, yeah. how did you find that piece? Where, where was it? It was in there the whole time. It was oh, in there the whole time. Yeah. That's the, man, that's the part that sucks. It was in there the whole time, man. And I was like more and more and more. And, you, you know, and this might be like kicking it off with a tangent, but why not? Right. You go through this like life. You're just this human. You're just going through this life. You're just this human on this planet on this earth and you, and, and all this stuff's happening around you. And you're like, where is my place in all of this? Mm. I think so many people like genuinely struggle with that. And I think us as like coaches and entrepreneurs and leaders, like we find kind of an avenue of growth and an avenue where we can shine and we can like, oh, wow. Okay. I do belong. Like I am making an impact. But I think then at the end of the day, you also go inwards while you're doing all these things externally and you go, well, what's that internal impact that I want to have for myself? So um, yeah, man, just like, you know, it sounds weird, but like in the style of like Laird Hamilton, like hitting a wave and surfing a wave and getting knocked down and, and, and going under the ocean and going like, whoa, I'm tiny. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, if you have a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari or a big mansion, that wave does not care. That wave does not care. It's just a wave and yeah. it's going to hit you and it's just you and your breath, right? You and your breath. So, Dude, yeah. Wonderfully said. He ran out the big guns right in the first two minutes. But you know what's funny? Like just now, be just before this podcast, I picked up all my stuff that was sent to me from my uh, apartment in Kiev in Ukraine. And it was sent to my dad's place because I was on an Austria and I just picked it up. And I opened it and I'm like, oh, my Philippine shoes. Oh, my God. My Louis Vuitton belt. It These are like, like the shoes are like 500 euros. The belt was 500 euros. And I'm like, Ever since my separation from this belt and these pairs of shoes and all the shirts and the pants, ever since I got physically separated from these, I haven't spent a single millisecond thinking of these. Yep. I, in fact, completely forgot that I was in the possession of these. Yet, yep. I needed to buy it, right? Yet, I went out of my way to be at the store and be like, I want to buy these shoes. And I got my credit card out and it could ching, you know, thousands. There's literally thousands of dollars in this freaking box in this cardboard box that they sent me from ukraine and i'm like i haven't missed any of this in a single freaking beat and now yeah. i'm throwing like 80 percent of the stuff i'm just throwing away whereas actually what i'm gonna do is first i'll bring it to my mom and then uh because she's always like oh i'll give it to your brother and then i'd be like okay let him pick whatever he wants and the rest please don't hate it don't store it like, don't be like, we'll need it. Just fuck. If if none of us <laughs> needed it the last fucking 12 months, just throw it away, donate it, give it to someone, but don't store it anywhere. It's just going to catch dust. And just like you said, man, like, what the fuck we need it for? For me, it's a little bit of a of an excuse of like, I shoot a lot of content. I shoot a lot of reels, like, right? Like I post two videos on my Instagram a day. So if I would just own the same five shirts, which... I like privately, I just wear the same three, four shirts, rotate through them. But at least in the videos, I want to wear different clothes, not to look just as much as a bum because I'm a business consultant. You know, I'm like, I'm helping people make money. So at least I should look the part. But if it wasn't about that, I well, would. Well, that's different. That's a part of like, that's pretty, that's like your tools, you know, that's like a part of your delivery. Yeah. That's like very different. Yeah. And I think when you go and you get the luxury items, you do it because you can't. Like you literally do it to show yourself that you can do it. It's awesome. like, wait a minute. I don't know if you ever had this where like back in the day, I remember walking past like the luxury outlets and being like, oh man, I can only imagine like the people that must shop there, you know, and they must be like so loaded. Right. And um, it was kind of cute the other day we were just going through and I was like, you know, let's go look at Prada. Right. And there's this uh, green, green bag. And, uh, and, you know, my girlfriend's like, oh, it's like the perfect brand bag. And, and then in her mind, she's like, oh, we can never obtain that. And I'm like, you know what? Like I'm a, I'm a break reality. Like, boom, here you go. 
you know she's like wait uh, what i'm like uh i'm like yeah because like at the end of the day like none of that shit really matters like i went into louis vuitton the other day i really tried to find something i like bro i couldn't find anything i was like i just like you know like i i, I just like not not my not my style right so uh different different strokes for different folks i guess 100 percent. And, and you have a good point where you say like do it just to show yourself that you can I always say it like this because a lot of people, you got a young, a lot of a lot of young folks keep asking me, does money make you happy? And I say it doesn't per se. It's really helpful. But here's what I recommend you do. None of you is going to believe me that money makes you happy and that buying awesome watches and expensive clothes is going to make you happy. None of you is going to believe me. So I want for all of you to make so much money that you then do these things. You do buy all the watches and all the expensive clothes. And then you learn that lesson for yourself that it doesn't bring you happiness. So I think everybody should go through that, through that role, through that phase where they're buying the expensive stuff just to realize it's not going to do anything for you. So I'm not an advocate of like, never buy expensive stuff. I'm like, go make money, go buy the expensive stuff and then just take the lesson and learn that you don't need it. And then you'll probably circle back to just whatever is fucking comfortable. And, And you'll probably buy even more expensive stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you'll buy like 10 to 50 times more expensive stuff, but it's almost like the archetype of like the billionaire, like, you know, ho- hopping on his private jet in sweats. Right. You know, you know what I mean? He's just like in sweats. He's got his laptop. He's just yeah. like listening to, you know, he's listening to Iron Maiden or some something cool, you know, yeah. like very like, like that billions archetype of Bobby Axelrod, I think is really kind of fit. like you can have, you know, your bespoke fitted suits and, and have really, really nice things in a beautiful home and um, have luxury uh, I think money lets you be who you are. Mm-hmm. I think money lets you be who you are. And whether you are a happy person or a sad person, a depressed person, a bipolar person, um, an innovator, you know, like where is the line between visionary and, and hallucination? Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that you see for yourself, money lets you do that. So if you want to spend that on luxury items and be, and look really cool and look like a rapper, like, yo, I listen to like pop smoke. I'm like, oh, Christian to yo to yo I'm up in all the stoves you know like like I'm all about that right that's the life man but I don't even uh, know what that is so I'm missing the reference but it's it's a hip-hop artist you know r.i.p uh, yeah, but some some good stuff some good stuff there here's the thing is the same reason why I started throwing my own parties because I was sick and tired of listening to bullshit music so I started just making my own parties we would literally yeah. be like 60 models or model like looking Beautiful women, beautiful people, my staff, me, my friends. And I would just play Iron Maiden. I'm like, glad that everybody's here. Thank you so much for the party. Love you all. Now go endure Iron Maiden <laughs> instead of yeah. party music. You know? <laughs> and, and it's funny, That's right? Funny. You most get... people are like, most, he's, sorry to interrupt. most people are like, damn, what's that song? Who, who's that artist? I'm like, oh, motherfucker. That's Iron Maiden. Okay. Yeah. That song is older than you. You never fucking heard of Iron Maiden at least it's an interesting most people it's an, know the damn beatles but at, le- at least that you know totally dude you know I'm, I'm a dj right so djs have this like inside joke of like no requests right like there's yeah. nothing worse than being at a party and being like play miley cyrus <laughs> and and then so what i used to do is i used to have a bunch of like the current pop music as just um just the acapella and I would remix it Ooh. into the song. So I'd be like, you know what? I'll give you some Miley. I'll give you some Miley. And I'd put it on the little beat pass. Go, and, I'd, and I'd throw it into some, you know, some heavy techno, some heavy, like melodic, melodic techno type of stuff. That's like totally different. And they're like, what? This isn't the song. I'm like, it's better. This it's, is what you like I now. It better. <laughs> it's like, this is what you like now. You don't like that. You like this now. <laughs> it was great. What's your, do you have a, a DJ Instagram? S W I M with dots in the middle. Someone who isn't me. S dot W dot I M. How the hell? Oh, I, oh, I'm following you, man. You got to post more, man. You got to post more shit. Yeah, new tracks coming out. So just dropped a new track. Um, another one coming out in about a week and a half. We're going to be doing a track every two weeks. And very, very excited to see some of the techno space artists that we're working with. But yeah, you got it. It's coming together. Um, and we have man. some crazy AI art. We should definitely talk about that, how you know, AI is influencing art and I was gonna, entrepreneurship and the way we create content. Like the stuff gonna. we're doing is revolutionary, man. It's, um, it's so far beyond what I've seen anybody in our space doing. I'm just so excited to kind of share it with people. I'm, I'm super excited about it. You know me pretty well. And, um, you know, marketing feels like you explore that territory pretty quickly. 
you explore yeah. the marketing, you know what I mean? You, you've explored the marketing village and it's like, you can do more stuff in there, but like you kind of, that village isn't really like explosive and super um, inspiring sometimes, to be honest, you know what I mean? Like, it's cool. It's great. It's fun, but it's not like, wow, I found this new thing. And this is the first time maybe in the last like 10 years that I feel like the entire town is transforming. It's like, we've discovered a new technology. You know how in like uh, Age of Empires, you like discover a new technology and your whole like your whole village totally operates. changes, right? Yeah, totally. It's like you're in the Bronze Age, you know? So we're in this like crazy AI age and everything's transforming. It's so sick. So um, yeah, we're doing that with music. So so one of the things we're doing with music is we're doing these AI music videos. So I'm working on a full one hour visual auditory experience. Ooh. And so it's going to be uh, the story of this girl named Dot. And she finds herself in a mystical, magical world. And there's all this magical energy and these magical creatures. And then there's this, this steampunk universe. And she's going through and she's going through this big forest with these giant spiders. And then she comes out and then she's in the desert. And then we have kind of like some Egyptian theme stuff. And then we go into the cities and we have a cyberpunk city oh, type of stuff. It's cool. really, really cool. It's all, it's, 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 um, it's very similar to like what the gorillas did, you know? And um, so that's also coming out. That's Daft Punk did with the, what is it called? Interstellar from Daft Interstellar. Punk, the, whole, the whole album. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It's super sick. And um, I just can't, can't wait to put the hour together. And then we're going to be able to play that live at mm -hmm. festivals and present that in a way where you're not just seeing a DJ perform. Now you're experiencing yeah. a story and that story can change from year to year and we can evolve it and we can evolve the characters. And um, we wouldn't be able to do that without these AI tools to be able to make this, this video come to life. So we're really, really grateful to have this technology finally at our fingertips uh, to be able to do these crazy things. So, um, and the same with, same with marketing. I don't know if um, your guys know this, but a lot of the content we're putting out, I actually do zero. Ha. Yeah. I've seen you, I've seen you post something like you're, you're doing a, an AI marketing agency, something along those lines. Are you starting it? You're launching it. You're testing it yourself. We're what, testing what's it. That about? Yeah. Okay. So everybody, the, whenever you have a hot topic like this, right, it's always fad or transformation. Like there's always a first analysis. Like, is this is this a fad or is it a complete transformation? Mm. We saw that with NFTs. NFTs were judged very heavily by the market. Some people made a lot of money. Some people lost a lot of money. Where NFTs now is not really the hot topic. AI is the hot topic. So that's the first part of that analysis is, okay, is this here to stay? My analysis is absolutely without question, this is a transformational technology. Then the part two is how are you using it? So what you see on YouTube is the very basic. Okay, you open up ChatGPT. You give it some prompts and you get an output, right? We're all familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Then there's like the second level, which is you open up ChatGPT, you pre-prompt it, you give it a role. You say, you're going to act as a, uh, a marketer, as a copywriter, as whatever. And then you create assets, right? And then you realize, okay, that's like la layer two. Okay, layer three is you're, you're, we're going to give you a role and we're going to give you uh, an avatar to write to, right? Wow. And we're going to give you some products to write about with the benefits. And so you keep evolving the system. And so what I'm seeing- you do doing all least, this in one session, in like one chat GPT session? So no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it way, 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 way beyond that. So so that's like layer, you know, layer three. And then layer four is like, you feed it a, a voice profile. And then layer five is you feed it a reference. And layer six is you feed it some other stuff. But so what we're- that with chat GPT, you're doing that with other AI tools, right? I'm doing it this with chat GPT API right now, currently. Um, oh, we're also integrating audio as well. I had no idea. Yeah. And we're integrating, you know, Jarvis and creator and some of these other tools as well into it. But the way that we have it set up is really, really clever. Um, basically we have pre-built prompts. So we have pre-built prompts that are programmed into, um, a builder, a builder software that we created custom in house and you populate these prompts. So let's say like, I want a landing page, you populate the landing page prompt and it populates all of the prompts for you for headline, subheadline, video sales letter, bullets. Um, call to action, every single section of that lander, it gives you, it pre-populates the prompt. And then you say, hey, I have this one that performed really well. So now we're we plugging in all of our top performers on the back end into that system. So we can say, hey, we have a top performing headline from a different brand in a different niche, or we have a general vault, please reference those. Give me a new headline. And then we're plugging in three things. We're plugging in voice, we're plugging in avatar, we're plugging in product. So speak in this voice to this avatar for this product. And you can plug in specific elements of those products, like just give me the benefits or just give me the USB or just give me the call to action. And we're mishmashing and combining all these together dynamically in a tokenized format so that you can go ahead and you can build these things at the click of a button. That's what we're that's doing sick. on the agency side. Yeah, so that we that's could do a full that's full launch. An, an app that you're creating is that like it has a user interface. You, you sign up for it and then you do your thing. 
that's where that's where we're going to take it right now it's it's in-house only on agency side for our guys to use internally um we wanted to see if we can turnkey a full launch in one day that's basically our current challenge you remember like you and i used to do launches and it took what weeks right yeah. like you got to write the lander and then like you have to figure out the ad so every time that you do this digital product rollout you have like uh you have to write the product build the product do all the modules do all the lessons film it record it edit it upload it um, you know, you have the page, you have the video sales letter, you have the ads, you have the social media content, you have the emails, you have a, a whole package of things that are supporting this, this rollout. And what we're seeing right now is agencies can do it in a couple of weeks, mm. but I don't know a single agency that can do it in a day. Yeah. So is that's that, where we, yeah. Is the, is the bottleneck for these agencies, mostly the copy. And this is what this application is going to do. Mostly the copy, the strategy is still on your side, or does it roll out the entire strategy? How does it look like? It can do strategy off templates. I found the strategy to there. There's still a couple of components that are human dependent. Mm -hmm. I think the macro strategy and the predefinition is one of those. Um, you still have to edit the copy as well. We get it pretty close. We get it to about 70, 80, sometimes 90%. And then you go in and then you make some adjustments and then you edit it up. Yeah. Um, so there's still that human element. I think the, the, and then the design part, we haven't figured out yet. So ideally I would turnkey mid journey designs and have them auto parse into HTML. The whole, the whole idea, but like it, it creating stock footage, creating creatives and stuff like that. If you link that to, I can't remember all the AI tools, but if you link that together, that could just be done as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So we want to have, you know, AI wireframes that say that have different uh, modular page layouts, essentially that populate off of um, these cool designs. So that part we haven't quite gotten to, but the copy is, is coming together really, really phenomenal. And um, it's just saving us so much time. It's And it's far superior to going into, you know, most people are going into ChatGPT, they're saying, okay, here's my avatar. Here's my market. Here's my, they're having to type that in every time. We do pre-built voice for the brand. So we have like Max Voice 1, Max Voice 2, Max Voice 3. One could be friendly Max Podcast Voice. The second one could be like your YouTube voice. The third could be like, yo, get it together voice, right? So, and you can uh, modulate between them depending nice. on the type of content that you're creating. It's really, really sick. Um, same with avatars. Avatars are pre-built and then products are pre-built. So that ends up being really quick access instead of having to go into a Google doc and pull your latest prompt and put it in. No, no, it's all it's all dynamic and modular. So um, really excited for that rollout and really excited for the video content side too, what yeah. we've um, been able to create. I don't know if you've seen these crazy AI video things I've been putting out. Have you seen, you seen these yet? Dude, I'm like, damn, looks like a fucking like an art piece meets fever dream kind of like, holy shit. It's like, it's creating visuals right in front of my eyes. It's pretty epic. It's, it's intense, man. And um, I'll break down how, how this is done for you in a little bit. And then, uh, you, you know, there is another layer that we're trying to, to add to this. So this is done in Kyber. And uh, basically we created a model where I don't have to do anything for content. I literally do nothing for my team to be able to put out content like that. And um, I'll do broad strokes. So essentially what they do is they take my pre-existing content, they um, reverse engineer it into voice tone style delivery. Mm -hmm. Then they generate topics in the niche that we're in. Then we tell it to write short one minute prompts in that style. They edit it. They put it into 11 labs, which is a voice AI system, which allows you to replicate your voice. They replicate my, so, so they literally take the, script, the, take the topic, create a script, put it into 11 labs, combine it with a piece of music, then, then in mid journey, create an image um, that matches that, that type of style. So if we're talking about, you know, how to do um, like how to be productive, right. They might do a clock, something like that, yeah. or how to make lots of money. It might do a big bag of money. Right. So that's the starting image. And they take that and they put it into Kyber together with the, uh, the audio track. And then they storyboard out the actual visuals that are going to be happening. So we're starting with an image as the framework from mid journey. And then we're pushing that all the way through to this crazy one minute final piece. And it's taken us months to innovate and be able to get this to be that smooth. Um, but what ends up happening for like, I think you'll resonate with this. You're, you're big on like leveraging time. This is a zero to infinity time leverage task uh, for us. It's the first time we've really hit something as a company that requires me to do actually nothing period mm -hmm. at all. Um, and I've never, ever had that. So I'm really like still processing it. Um, because what happens is you wake up and your creatives are there in your voice, in your voice Sick. with your tonality for any topic you want. 
And uh, the big challenge with that has always been if you're doing talking head, you can't really deep fake yourself super well yet. Yeah. But if you have these crazy visuals going on, yeah. Now people are compelled and excited. So yep. anyway, I figured I'd share that. Oh, only the people that that listen to Max's stuff will will, will get that and and <laughs> actually have access. We, we don't really like disclose that to too many people, to be honest. So I figured uh, is, just like it nice is it is bit. really freaking epic. Uh, I've been messing around as well with it because we have a, a small extension to our uh, short form video. Uh, program the reels masterclass coming up where we want to implement ai more where we want to make the content creation part easier for people like you and i it is already easy like i turn my freaking phone on i ramble for 30 seconds i send it to my team and you know i have like a gazillion i got like 12 years of footage because i've been shooting content for 12 years in b-roll and they just slap the b-roll that we've ever shot on it but for the average person it's still a lot like i know for the average person it can take a long time to just you know, they do, they speak into the camera 20 takes for a 15 second video. And then they painfully put together the B roll and stuff like that. And, and their AI can just for the, for the, for the average person can step in and, and just alleviate so much of their workload. It's crazy, man. And even on the editing side, you know, there's like uh, autopod, right? Autopod automatically cast because between two cameras, it's in Premiere. Um, so ah, there's yeah, all, true. yeah. So there's all these little like, Things that remember we used to keyframe stuff. Like remember all that, like keyframe oh. by keyframe. It was pay your. You want to like blow your brains out, man. It's wild, I right? To, and I used to create freaking subtitles manually. There was crazy, no right? AI yet for like click the button, create the uh, subtitles. I used to freaking every sentence, play it, write it out, put it on keyframe, play it again to make sure it's all right. And next, like, dude. And what's what's kind of cool? But where where. where are you right now this looks like a beautiful backdrop sir where where are you where are you been? where are you Austin currently Alps, just my hometown <laughs> oh it looks beautiful my beautiful hometown man and, it looks uh, fantastic it is, it is. i yeah. got air conditioning now too which in austria is not a thing you know um so now it's not too hot in my bedroom either there's literally kids running around with traditional austrian dresses which i always know is going to be kids from freaking tourists because no normal kid here would wear that <laughs> but they're like let's blend in with the fucking indigenous people and like nope that's a tourist we wouldn't wear this so yeah it's funny it's funny that's it's really that's it, what's really cool is like right downstairs there's like um, a really nice restaurant and a hotel and the last year the red bull folks from the formula one team were staying there like the drivers Second. and everything and I'm working here in this little area. I got like 270 degrees of uh, view. I got my treadmill on the other side of this uh, little standing desk. And I'm like always, I speak right down to see like whenever there's like a, a, a blacked out van coming to the hotel, I know it's those guys. And I'm just going to run down and ask for a couple selfies, total fanboy style. Well, yeah, so far, yeah, they haven't arrived. I think honestly this year they might be staying somewhere else. God damn it. But last year they landed with a helicopter right over there on this field on that side, and then they just stayed at this place. Super freaking cool. That's super uh, dope, man. We, we should we should we should like we should have like you know stolen the helicopter or something. Like we should have like you know, <laughs> you know like, like one of those prank vid- you know like one of those prank videos. <laughs> Try to fly away. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 but because but then the drivers would tackle you and you'd go, I'm a yeah, let's go. And then that's your selfie. You know, you're like getting tackled by your, by your, yeah. by your hero. I'm so glad you film it with it in camera, you know, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Totally. hundred percent post it up, you know, get 10 million views. And then they're like, man, like, my max yeah, they're like, you're our best friend now. Like we got some, we got more views on that than the actual race, yeah. you know, <laughs> they like, hire let's you go. As, like their marketing manager for like viral campaigns. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you know me i'm I'm always the infiltrator it's always a good time man, um good time super, super cool man yeah uh catch go what are you what are you doing catch, catch us up i'm sure the folks know but uh hit, hit me uh, with some hard ones here i've traveled now almost six months this year i think we started traveling in uh in february to bolzano italy to to hike up the, the dolomites we were hiking and, and ski touring in the dolomites then we went to dubai then cyprus Vienna, Prague in between, then Tokyo. Did I miss something? Oh, then Paris, then a- Amsterdam, Berlin. Damn, in Berlin. So, so, oh, sorry, no, so you're just adventuring? Time. Is it like, let me just go kind of like yes. exist where the universe is guiding me? Is that what no, that is? No, not like that. So the, the last one we shot was in, in Berlin with Jeffy. Oh. Yeah, that's oh. literally why we went to Berlin. So like it just started with um, beginning of the year. 
company was hitting record months and I'm like the last whatever. I mean, I was still traveling more than the average person, but it felt more like I was I was much more at a place. And I also felt like from within, I'm like, I'm ready to travel a lot again, sure. which I wasn't ready before. Like ever since I stopped touring in 2018, I wasn't really ready to to tour anymore. Like really living out of the suitcase for multiple months kind of traveling. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, of course. And then I'm like, okay. Uh, and then a friend of mine, we the year before we said, he was like, I was walking with him in Vienna and he's like starting to breathe heavily. And I'm like, bro, what's up? He's like, oh, you got to stop smoking as he's smoking his vape, you know? And I'm like, well, stop now. I, I hate this when people say I got to stop smoking as they're fucking smoking the nicotine vape. So I'm like, throw it away right now. And he's like, no, I can't do it. I'm like, throw it away. You just told me you want to stop. So fucking throw that shit away. So he, I made him throw it into the bin right there on the streets of Vienna. And then we kind of talked and we said, hey, uh, in your birthday next year, we're going to go to Dubai together. And until then, you're not going to smoke. And then we smoke shisha there. Nice. Um, he ended up smoking again a couple months later. Uh, I, like I met him again. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm smoking again. I'm like, it's your health, not mine. Um, And then he missed the f- he couldn't go. He couldn't come to Dubai. But we had already booked everything because I have to book much more in advance. Yep. You know, I was inviting friends. Uh, we were booking everything. My videography we were like five people there. So yeah, we're like, well, we got it booked. Might as well go to Dubai. So we went to Dubai, shot a couple of videos. It was really awesome. Met a client there, actually. Uh, last day, uh, a dating coach from Germany. He just hit his first 60 or 70K month in, in June, which is really cool. Nice, man. dude. Just Heck some yeah. kid in Germany, you know, and it's yeah, not like launch based. It's just evergreen. So mm-hmm. this guy is now banking 70K a month uh, with two team members, like one mm-hmm. closer, mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. setter. Really cool. I think he has one coach that helps him or something like that. And some guy who edits some videos, but you know, it's a lot of profit for him. Yeah. It's and, um, yeah. Really cool. So we met him by accident in Dubai. He was on his way to Thailand. Um, really cool. And, and then, and then, so we had that booked and then we like, okay. And then after Dubai, uh, we have, I have to go to Cyprus. Um, and then before, uh, and then we're like, okay. And then after, oh, and then we said, let's go to Japan. We, this one time, I was in I was in Prague and my favorite restaurant is an Asian Ch- uh, Japanese fusion restaurant called Soul Love Prague and I know the owner now and everything because I I went there yep. every day really yep. funny side story until he's like I went there every day and then I got some call one day like hey this is David from Soul Love and I'm like yeah am I speaking to Maximilian I'm like yeah did you I see here did you come to our restaurant in the last two weeks like eleven times. And I'm like, nice. yep, that yeah, that was me. And he's like, I was I was just making sure, like, didn't you didn't accidentally reserve all these times? I'm like, no, no, I showed up every time. And also I showed up a couple times without a reservation. And he's like, Oh, I- I'm looking also at the, the money that you spent there. Like, holy shit, you know, next time you come by, um, just let me know. And then the next time I pass by nice. with a girl and and he's like, and he just like brings a bottle of champagne and gets me super drunk. And then I went there one more time. And then again, he brings me free booze and I don't drink alcohol, but yeah. if I get it, I don't want to be impolite. So I drink like two or three bo- two bottles of two or three bottles. Let's go. I'm <laughs> going hard. Let's two, get two, it. I, I drink like Listen. Two, glasses and, um, and I'm getting drunk super quickly from like two or three glasses. So one time we got drunk and we're like, let's go to Japan. So that's how we booked the Japan trip. So oh, we had sick. the Dubai trip and the Japan trip pretty much carved in stone. In Japan, I wanted to stay a whole month, not just like I want to live there, you know, with going to the gym, with grocery store, with friends, making friends, meeting people. And that's why I stayed a whole month there. I also bought this watch there. It was also cool. And then yeah. and then we had these like couple of weeks in between. So we're like, OK, cool. Well, let's go to Cyprus in between, rent a big villa, go do awesome stuff, shoot videos. And then, after, and then I'm like. Oh, hey, Metallica are playing in fucking Europe and they're playing this thing where they're playing two shows in three days. Oh, sick. Yeah, with different sets each time. So it's like a double ticket. So I'm like, cool. I look oh, at that's the sick. Yeah, and almost everything I was already somewhere else, except for May, whatever, 16 to 19, they would play in Paris. And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't have anything planned. It's exactly between Berlin where I want to meet Jeffy because that was another thing. I looked at the tour dates of my buddy Jeffy and I'm like, I haven't hung out with Uncle Jeff in a while. Just like I'm doing with you here, 
I want to maintain these friendships. And I know if you don't put in the work as an older, busy person, dude, it's tough, right? Yeah, it's, it's just like the, just, the world is just a whoosh, 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 whoosh. Next like, thing you know, you haven't seen someone for fucking 10 years, right? That is why I'm staying in touch with you. That is why I'm yeah, sending you stupid memes and I'm, and I'm answering on your stories. And I invite you to the pod because I'm like, if if you don't go out of your way, it's not going to fucking happen. This is not school time anymore where you're like, I meet my freaking buddy every day at mathematics class. I know if I if you don't go out of your way and you consciously make a decision, let me hit that guy up. Let me hit that old friend up. How are you doing, man? What city you're in? You know what? I don't got anything planned around that time. I'll be there too. Fuck it. I'll book the flight. I'll book the hotel. I bring two, three friends with me. I shoot awesome content. And if you then have cool things like a channel or a podcast where you can invite your awesome interest. Even, be- even on, better. Yeah, even, now it's even better. better. So now it's like yeah. you're catching up with a friend. You're monetizing it. You're sharing. You're having good fucking vibes. Then you grab some steak together, some ice cream. You make it a double date and whatnot. And you have a good fucking time. Like if you yes, don't sir. put in work to friend into friendship as an as a person beyond 25, it's not going to work. You'll lose your friends. And friends are totally. really fucking valuable. So that is really why valuable. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to link up with Jeff in fucking Berlin. Um, I'll be in Japan here. And then there was this like eight day window where I'm like, Metallic is playing in Paris. I ain't never been to Paris. Let's go. So I bought the tickets. I booked the Airbnb. I invited the friends. We went there. We smuggled in the cameras. We filmed in the freaking mosh pit of Metallica. I think I sent you the videos. Did I send you the crazy? Yeah. Videos? yeah. Like there's freaking mosh pit and stage diving and then i'm like oh hey you know rock and park festival where i go every freaking year with my head of sales uh nico berger who's you know head of sales in our company so he's flying in from medellin colombia to hang out with me at rock and park festival in nuremberg so i literally had this back to back to back to back to back crazy but it's fun concert oh and then we went but it's fun right it's it's beautiful and I love it. We went to see Hans Zimmer in Amsterdam, and two days later we saw Slipknot in Amsterdam. What a great oh, combination! Hans yeah, Zimmer that's and awesome. Hans and then I'm like, and that was the last six months. It was just nonstop out of the suitcase, and now I'm like, I arrived back in Austria, <laughs> ground yeah. my ass in the nature. First thing I did is Boom. I walked around the lake and walked to my favorite forest. I'm just fucking being by myself, man. Even before I had Primoz come here, I'm like, give me, like, I want a couple of days just purely freaking alone. Yeah. And it, it feels so good. I'm just instant zen. Like after two days, I'm zen. Cheers. Dude, we've been doing, we've been doing this breath work, man. We, so I've been doing this breath work stuff and you, you know, I think it's, it's good to always ask that because your audience is familiar with you, but you sometimes get a different take, you know, when it's more of like a personal conversation, it's like, Oh wow. Like that. That's adventure, you know, that's adventure, that's exploration, that's fun, right? And we I've been doing this breath work. Um, this guy, Tyler here, does this really deep holotropic breathing. And so it's like it's an hour of breath work, heavy breath work. Mm-hmm. And then you go into cold plunge and then you do cold plunge, sauna, cold plunge, sauna. Love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. So for Zen, for sure, like, you know, I'm I'm by the ocean here. And if you're ever in San Diego, definitely come by. Before we move out of here, well, I'll freaking uh, visit, bro. Next year, dude, let's let's do it. Come on by. We might we might be, end up being in Austin. We're looking at Austin, mm-hmm. Texas. Um, but either either way, yeah, either way, you know, Austin. We could get cowboy hats and be all like, "Ee haw!" Yeah, that that's, that's always been my dream. Anymore, let's go to get freaking bar. Let's go, on, let's go. Yeah, it's always been my dream to just get like cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and just like just talking to so then kind of southern sway. Oh, why, my miss, you do look fantastic today. You know, just <laughs> you just, just, like, just straw like a piece of straw. Yeah, you know? yeah, dude, and just be like, just totally in character, you know, and just be like <laughs> the most charming southern man ever on earth you know man that's a real gentleman right there you know like the john wick of texas you know what i'm saying <laughs> and I'm like michael michael is cool you know it's funny you can stop you i don't know what you're talking about, I was man, talking about. The, whole, the whole visit you stay <laughs> you know me mr max i'm all about that authenticity yes sir <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a man, good time. i, I want to like i said i want to uh, live in hawaii next year for like two three months and oh, on cool. the way there, I'll pass by. You're you're on top of my list to visit, bro. 100%. Dude, let, you, ooh. maybe Brandon Carter, maybe Julian. Uh, like, but top of the list is my homeboy, Mikhail. Stop on by, man. Yeah, and uh, if you're in Hawaii, let me know. Uh, I'm overdue for a Hawaii trip, so Dude, my pop yeah. over there. I always, um, when I'm in Hawaii, I, I always touch down. I grab a red Jeep. And I drive around with the top down and I blast Led right. Zeppelin. So oh. yes, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a, yeah, that's a vibe, right? It was Man. like, get some cashmere up in those, those rolling 
beautiful Hawaiian hills, dude. Dude, I remember. Did, 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 you oh yeah, Luke, wasn't it? You, me, and Luke in a in a in a jeep rolled down, and we drove through the night in Honolulu after okay, shooting was, some freaking video. That was a crazy trip, man. Was it you? Was cr- I think it was you. I yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. yeah, that was when we were doing. You were doing the natural launch, I think, for that. Remember, exactly. we we I, I think I finished the landing page there. Yeah, yeah, we talked was, about that the last. Time we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a recap. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo! Did your audience have anything they wanted me to like unpack further? I feel I feel like we're we're, we're, we're rocking here. We're having fun. We're Is there like some bad? So is there some some value like is there a cookie I can bake? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to bake some cookies up in here. You know, get me get me in there. Give me no, man, you, dude, I think that was already super valuable. That the all the whole AI stuff that you talked about earlier. This yeah. uh, this whole idea about like grounding yourself and like the um the 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 my brain it's been a, it's been a yeah uh, well you know what i think is great realistic stuff what was great yeah yeah well, well I, I think it's so cool what, what you things. do with with your program it's because dude we're not born with like a blueprint for life like as a baby we come out we're like we don't get like a manual like you buy a thing right you buy yeah, like a table yeah, you yeah. get like a manual thing right it's like build this table this way for your for your like the entire life that you are living like there's nothing there's just literally like well, good, good luck good, hope you hope you don't die you know yeah good luck <laughs> it's like, well, yeah it's like, yeah here's... Good, Here's, good luck out there here's, here's some heartbreak here's some disappointment here's people that lie to you good luck bye and good luck, hey, have fun. Hey, 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 hey. but you better fucking pay taxes okay yeah. how much how much taxes do i owe you we're not going to tell you we're not going to tell you but this? we will arrest you that's not you. the right amount you have to pay more well You're how much arrested. do you have to pay not our problem but this is not the right amount <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen this meme? It's like, oh, dude, it's it's, it's, like, it's the life, you're, man. You still owe us taxes. How much? We're not gonna tell you. We're not gonna tell okay, you. But if you're taxes. wrong, we're gonna arrest you. Yeah, but if you're <laughs> yeah. wrong, we're gonna arrest you exactly. and take everything you have. <laughs> yeah, like no, good luck guessing. Like, good luck. Tell me how much it is. God damn it. It's hilarious, bro. It's hilarious. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a whole nother uh, rabbit hole. You know, but but it's it's so fascinating, right? Like you'll find the, you'll have these little moments. I'm sure you have this when you're like walking by the lake and you're. I mean, like you have that sense of connection with the universe. Like the universe is kind of like looking down at you and it's like, Hey, are you going to adhere to the principles that you said that you are like, like you said, you're a diligent worker. You said you're a faithful. Everybody husband. says oh, I'm nice. I'm not a liar. Da, 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 da. Right. Yeah. But everybody can say that, you know, how, how does Mike Tyson say like everybody's bad until they get punched in the face in the face. Kind of yeah. like that. Everybody's nice. And like, not an asshole and honest until they're about to make a ton of money. They're about their own personal gain. Like, oh, I've just lied this one time and blah, blah, blah. It's really, really tough. It's beautiful that you said that. Like, if you, the older you get, the harder it is to not turn bitter, to stay honest, to stay true to the values that you grew up within. Like a lot of my clients, they they all, they come all from a similar generation as I do. And our generation we, we grew up with the Disney movies where the boss is the patriarchal suppressor, the asshole, the hierarchy. And we all grew up kind of like thinking, if I ever become a boss, I'll be cool. I'll be friends with everybody. And then you get your first employees. I see this with every single one of my advanced clients. You know, they make 30, 40, 50K a month. They get their first two employees and they're best buddies with everybody. Until yeah. six months in, these employees, they shit on their fucking carpet. They disrespect them. They're underperforming and he still pays them. And I'm like... Nope. It's because you had no hierarchies. It's because you didn't want to be the patriarch. I'm not saying be a patriarch, be a suppressor, but I'm just saying learn your fucking lesson, buddy, because you can't be best friends with people that you employ. But at the same I, time, on the other extreme, sorry, I'm about to finish. No, 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 go off. Wow, this is great. Go, go, go. Rocky, 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 rocky. Yeah. On the same, on the same, on the other end of the extreme, it's really tough to not turn bitter as you grow older because people are going to fuck you over. People are going to lie. Uh, your heroes will be dethroned by yourself because you're going to be disappointed. Everybody that you think is going to have their shit together, you sooner or later find out they're fucking just as insecure and scared as I am, starting with your parents. Like, remember when you still thought your parents got shit figured out and, oh, my parents know everything. And the older you get, you're like, God damn it, man. My <laughs> my uncle cheated on my aunt and and he lied and then she lied and then my mom lied about this and wait a minute my mom also lied to me about that and and holy shit she's just as scared and my dad has insecurities and you're like well fuck if my parents ain't got this shit figured out oh my god the fucking and the president is stumbling around and he can't even walk (laughs) anymore well this motherfucker ain't got it figured out either oh the rock star 
that is fucked that has everything money fame uh uh women he kills himself who the fuck where are the people that got this shit figured out where are the people that i can look up to where's the fucking people that i listen to for advice well this guy teaches me about spirituality well guess what he's fucking broke this guy teaches me about uh, hitting to the gym well guess what he's fucking stressed well this guy teaches me about fucking making money well guess what he's he's abusing his his wife well fuck who are the fucking people that got this shit figured out who can i ask well, let me go to the church well these fucking guys have <laughs> their own whole bag of fucking pedophilia scandals and shit the president is fucking uh is is fucking shit up the president the whole all the politicians are fucking corrupt we're like fuck where (laughs) where are the fucking people i can hold on to well nobody buddy everybody's scared everybody's in scarcity everybody has their fucking insecure moments nobody got their shit figured out we're all just a bunch of kids with more responsibility. We're fucking kids with fucking buttons that launch nuclear weapons, man. We got kids that have fucking companies with thousands of people underneath them. We're fucking kids, man. Some guy pisses me off. I drive in a fucking Maserati and I'm still mad at the guy who cuts me off. Nobody got this shit figured out. You're fucked up. You're fucking alone. And the only thing you can do is do your fucking best not to turn bitter, is do your fucking best to at least 51% of the time pick the right thing, be fucking good, try to not get hurt. And if you do get hurt, just keep fucking going and still believe in the good in this world. And that costs a lot of fucking energy. So I understand when there's 25, 35, 45-year-olds who are bitter, I understand when there's people who don't have trust anymore. I understand because it costs fucking time and energy and willpower to still be a good fucking person, to still believe in hard work, to still believe in yourself and the circle around you. It costs a lot of fucking time and energy, but guess what? It's fucking worth it. It's still fucking worth it worth it and and you don't just choose that once you choose it every single second of every single minute that that you live right the way that you live you know i'm gonna offer like a little bit of a counter counter perspective i think it gets easier i think as you get older it actually Mm. gets easier i think uh at at least what i found is your observation changes so you start looking around you start seeing all the patterns and you're like you ever have that where like you get invited to a thing you don't really want to go your intuition is telling you not to go you end up going and then you're there. You're like, oh yeah, I should have just trusted my intuition mm-hmm, yeah, and just yeah, not gone, right? And, and then, but then we have other cases where we go and it's amazing, right? So so that tells us like, we're not so, we're not as smart as we think we are. Like this like trust your gut intuition thing, like every entrepreneur harps on that, but that, that function is not as accurate as you think that it is, mm. but it is going to put you in the right ecosystem to get the data to be accurate in the future. So when you have those little moments, like, other people on earth don't exist. Like this, this, this is, this is the, the counterpoint you exist. And then the universe exists and you and the universe exist and other people are just like there. Okay. So if you start with that, then, then you don't have to worry about the constructs on earth as they exist. We're just, we're just on a snapshot in time right now. We've got all this crazy stuff going on. It feels really crazy. But like, yo, the earth could be gone. Like the structure of the galaxy and of the universe, would it really change that much? Question mark, right? So so this whole thing is not as important as we make it out to be. We put all this pressure on ourselves. And when you have those moments, and I think it's most prevalent in nature, where you realize it's me and the world. Like what is my relationship to my existence itself? Like, am I resentful? Am I grateful? Am I happy? Am I blessed? Am I connected to that source that that's looking down and saying, I'm going to throw stuff at you and I'm going to see what those principles are. And I'm going to see how many times you fail. And I think the amount of times that you can fail, you can choose to fail close to zero times. Actually. I think you can, I think you can choose. I think that that archetype of like gladiator, you remember that, you know, that remember the movie gladiator. Yeah. I think that archetype still exists today in a big way is just starting to come out for men, like, like, like yourself, yeah. like myself, um, where they're saying we're, we're putting our foot down. We're saying, no, you know what? Like, like I have, I have um, a, a partner, a woman, I'm deeply in love with her. There is zero probability of me cheating on her. It's not a, it's not a, I was drunk and this It's not a, there, there is zero. It is, it is not 0.01. It is zero. And it has to be zero because again, when the universe looks down it goes, well, what is up with that 0.01% dude? And you go, well, you know, if it's like, 
uh, Halle Berry or, you know, like guys have that like thing, right. Where they're like, they're, they're, they're not willing to put themselves in the bullseye of the arrow of pain voluntarily, because that's, that's a scary, that's the most difficult thing to do. But when you're able to put yourself and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm all in because the type of man that should exist, the type of men that we would want to exist would go all in and be faithful and diligent and support our partner and lift them up and, and, and hype our friends up and stand up for our friends when they're not in the room. That is the type of person that I tell myself I am. So if I don't behave that way, I am no longer that person. I actually no longer exist. The moment you start to violate your principles, you no longer exist. Something else exists. A different version of you exists, yeah. but it's like an avatar. It's like an archetype and yeah. it's trying to accomplish this other mission, but that's not you anymore. You end up getting trapped inside in this little prison. You can kind of see it with people when you know, you can see it in their eyes. They know they're capable of doing more, but they just don't have the discipline. Right. That's one example. You, we see that archetype all the time, right? They know they could do it. They, and they have wishful thinking they could do it. They just don't have the discipline. So that's a perfect example of that. If you're, if you visualize yourself as somebody who, who has that success, the discipline is a, is a requirement. You can't just not exhibit the discipline because yeah. then you're not that person. You're like, you're lying to yourself about who you are. So I think that's one thing that I've, I've always really admired about you is when you have those moments with you and the universe talking, there's a conversation there and the universe is like, Hey, Max, like, did you do your best to, impact people when you're like, I, I really did. You know, I brought my guys out. I'm, I'm my program's amazing. I, I see how much work you put in behind the scenes on making your programs amazing. You're one of the most diligent, hardworking guys that I know. And um, hopefully your clients can see that in their results and, and their dedication to the program, like only the highest regards, right? So when you have that conversation with the universe, you go, I, I did. And you can say that with full force, with full certainty, a hundred percent authenticity. And the universe goes, because the universe knows you can't lie to the universe. You can lie to, you can lie to yeah. yourself. Yeah. But you can't lie to the universe. And it looks and goes, you did, didn't you? You know what? Here's a Metallica concert. Yeah. You know what, dude? You, you, you know what I mean? It, it, like it opens up this like quantum that. field of the, 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 and you're like, ooh, you're kind of going through space and it, and it sees and it guides you a little bit and goes, hey, as long as you're good, like, as long as you are who you say that you are, I will put you where you need to be, right? Trust me and I will guide you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are very afraid because that reminds them that they don't fully have control over everything and they're not able to trust. They get, they get that, that anxiousness effect where they yeah. want to retain control. And yeah. that actually prevents them from letting go and saying, you know what, this might lead me to tank my business. There's this new innovation path we're taking. My business might completely collapse or, you know what, this, this partner that I'm uh, invested in might break my heart. That might happen. I, I might find myself at, uh, uh, completely broken again. Mm -hmm. Am I or am I not willing to have that in order to be able to live an authentic life? Am I willing to pre-process that and go, oh, that might happen? I got it. Just, just like when you get on an airplane or you get in a car, any number of things could happen. But do you let that stop you? What do you do with that? And, and um, I think once you pre-process it, you're able to be really authentic because you are no longer afraid. That limitation, that self buzzing comes from from being being afraid, right? It's like you um, men will like you know cheat cheat on the cheat on their their significant other because they're afraid of getting hurt and they're afraid of communicating. Yeah. They're afraid of even admitting to themselves that they're having those desires, for example, mm -hmm. right? Oh no, bad boy, right? And, and then it creates mystique and that creates all, and it creates, it breaks families. It yeah. hurts children. Um, so yeah, just something to kind of think about. Um, and may, maybe when, when, by the way, let me know when we get to like the last like couple of minutes, maybe we'll do some breath work um, with the group yeah, here to-, yeah, to Open end, open end, buddy. <laughs> Sick. Uh, I mean, it depends on you. I got time, man. I got. I've, I've got time, man. Let's get it. Yeah, and and yeah. you know, like, this is good. So, you know, that that's such a big thing. Like, I if if we're talking like differentiators of success, look at Elon Musk. Like, you know that Elon, when he's having that conversation with the universe, the universe is like, you got this, Elon. Like, yeah. you're their only hope, Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, like Elon Wan Kenobi, you are like the only hope, yo. Like, like, like you're the last one, dude. Like one, after this, it's over. The only one who beats who beats. Uh... Freaking Zuckerberg and Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. You know, Let's... you know, one thing that I that I had to think the entire time as you went on this beautiful rant, I think our generation is the first generation of entrepreneurs that is with one leg in this like get shit done, materialistic, make millions world, but with the other one in this the universe and spirituality and breath work and namaste and reading about fucking 
being present the moment and Eckhart Tolle and Osho, that wasn't before. The generation before us, I know a lot of entrepreneurs that are, you know, the generation before me, they're now in their 50s, 40s, 50s. Uh, a lot of them are, are my mentors. I'm like, if if I had told those motherfuckers about like, yeah, I go to retreats, meditation, they're like, the fuck are you doing, man? That Get was money. not a thing. This is <laughs> yeah. our generation. This is the fucking web 2.0 millionaires. We are into this kind of shit with like, oh yeah, Eckhart Tolle. Oh yeah, it's crazy. And also funny enough, every entrepreneur in our generation they all have, at one point or other have been involved with RSD, right? With like game, personal development and all that shit. They all know Eckhart Tolle. It's so funny. We're all just like one globally connected tribe of like, you know, 25, 35 year olds. We're into spirituality as much as into fucking buying Lambos. And I like that. I think the Matrix. Yeah, I think entrepreneurship needed that because until then, entrepreneurship was this very... There's a there's a tractor driving up there. Welcome to Austria. And literally they just, see me rolling. They hate and um I think they're trying to see me plant that. and dirty, trying to plant and plant and dirty. And and dirty. <laughs> I think entrepreneurship <laughs> needed that because before that it was this very one-sided like walk over bodies, make profit. And now it's like, yes. But also be present while you walk over bodies. Well, it's that robber baron archetype, right? Of like, look like Carnegie and all these guys, right? That that laid these amazing industries. I mean, yeah. talk about the gall, like like the utter display of power in the physical realm. I, I think it's quite fascinating to see this, um, where where you have this dynamic display, and then I think what happens is human awareness is is creeping up. There's this like rising effect where it's almost like watching the clouds kind of lift up a little bit and you're seeing human consciousness go higher and higher and higher in certain areas. And what's ending up happening is like the majority of the population is getting totally left behind. Like the majority of the population getting totally left behind. They're like, they're eating their, their morning cereal. They're watching their TV and like, and like they check their Fox thing and like they 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 know about Facebook and they're like the Instagram and then they go and they like I don't know how to use this you know and and like looking at that and then realizing okay well as we're rising people are kind of seeing like like it's almost like a balloon you kind of catch that balloon you're like okay I'm gonna like do 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 and then you you kind of go up and you go oh I exist here now we were talking um, about this with a friend it's like zones of existence so he's he's a he's a business partner of mine major influencer. Um, he works with brands, you know, like, like Ferrari, like Rolex, uh, they send him stuff like, like really, really well-established guy. And we were talking about this, how the realm of existence transforms and and like money is a tool for you to transform your realm of existence. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I have a, a friend, a dear friend from, from way back, like 20 years ago, right. And friend, he, he called me and he says, Oh, I'd love to come see you. I'm like, well, where are you? He's like, Oh, I'm, I'm in Colorado. I'm like, well, that's close, man. Like, come on by. I'm in San Diego. Hop on over because in my mind it's like a, a like a flight from San Diego to Miami. It's like okay, cool. I'll be there like tomorrow. If like if you need me there, like I'm there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as long as I don't have like some crazy schedule thing, um, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Like like Europe's a little bit further. Like Europe's for sure a bigger bigger lift, but it's not like an unimaginable crazy. You, you know, like we really gotta plan this. You know, Johnny, like we really gotta get it together to go to go see Max in Helsinki or something. You know, like like, like it's it's not a huge deal. And so he he's like, oh, I can't do it, and I'm like well he's like i can't afford the ticket he can't afford it he's my age can't afford a ticket from colorado right i'm like oh man like now i remember why i didn't haven't talked to you in so long and like that, that's a painful feeling because that's something someone you care about yeah that wasn't able to catch the balloon you know yeah, what i mean they were yeah. they, they saw the balloons and they're like oh fuck it i'm fucking gonna I'll, stay I'll here fine yeah 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 and then we're like we're always like next balloon oh and we know like if we let go like there's there's i'm sure you've had that okay i have this when i play video games like every time that I like play a video game for more than an hour, I have this like fear. I'm like, oh no, I am sinking back. It, <laughs> oh no. Like, you know what I mean? Like that, anxi- like it's almost like an, an, an anxiety where you're like, oh God, no, no, no. I'm definitely not 17 again. Like I can't just do this all day. <laughs> and I totally can, by the way, my team will, yeah, yeah. will run everything. Like I totally could just do that and, and just dick around. But like there, there's that sense of like, you're slipping on the balloon a little bit. You're like, no, 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 no. And you know, that balloon's going to keep, keep climbing. Like other entrepreneurs will, will stay on, you know, they're not, they're not dicking around. So um, I found that to be like a really fascinating construct when you watch yourself and your own psychology transform the way that you see the world starts to change. 
And the more honest you actually have to be, I think the reason why I said it becomes easier because to persevere, you have to be more and more and more and more honest with yourself as you go. Because I think the most honest moment, and this will maybe blow some minds, like what's the most honest moment that you have in life? It's when you die. It's the day you die. It's the most honest moment you have. Think about it. Right? Like, imagine that. Like, oof. Yeah. And so, so did like, did you love your partner? Did you show up? Did you love your friends? Like, did you, did you do it? Did you do, did you do it? Did you do the life thing or did you fuck up? Right. So Imagine one um, guy is like, no, I'm still going to lie. Fuck it. They're like dying. And they're like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> That's got to be Donald Trump, right? He's like, oh, this is the greatest <laughs> death in America. I'm still, I'm... <laughs> you know what? He's greatest died like this before. The greatest. You know, seen the man. angels. They're fantastic. Everybody loves me. Everybody loves me. God is going to love me. Here I come. Here I come. And you know what? And God will. God will. Because it's, <laughs> because it's so crazy, right? Like, it's so crazy that it will. That's what will happen. And, and, and like, people don't understand that. Like, you can be really crazy now, guys. You can be as crazy as you want. As long as you have money, you are good. <laughs> Nobody, there, there's no life police. Like, like, reality check. There's no life police where you're like, if you're bawling too hard, that are going to stop you. Like it's called the IRS, but like, <laughs> as long as you know what I mean? But like, but like outside of that, like there's, there's nothing, nobody's going to be like, you're having like, too much only, fun. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry about the law. Don't worry about the police. Don't worry about your teachers. The IRS. Those are the guys at the top. They'll, those are the guys. They will get you. To those motherfuckers. <laughs> You know, it's if you're look, if you're getting arrested and it's like a, you know, it's like a lady cop. And so it's imagine. a fun, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, it's you know what I mean? Like, you're here's be... the thing. Imagine you're an alien and you find out about this concept of the IRS. Like, wait a minute. What? So this monkey planet here, they have like leaders, but they're not really the leaders because they're all corrupt and they're all steered anyways by the people who sponsor them. And they have this thing, though, that you can't fuck with. Is this group of monkeys? They take whatever twenty percent of your income, and they know they know everything. Fuck them! <laughs> like, imagine <laughs> yeah. you're an alien trying to understand that concept of the fucking IRS. Yo, I, I sometimes wonder what these Illumina. So, I, okay, I had this crazy dream, bro, the other night. I had this crazy. I was James. I was like basically like James Bond, Ooh. and I was break. And I was breaking into this big like imagine like a big vineyard, you know, with with like like this big vineyard and then it's had this big like mansion on it right yeah like an evil up, european bad guy the evil it's european always. james bond thing yeah totally yeah. totally is spot on that and and i'm like i'm like at the front gate i'm like oh you know and, and in my dream i was supposed to be there like i was in a tuxedo like i was supposed to be just like let in and they're like no like like no we can't let you in and i was like well i have an invitation and they're like no it's not valid so i remember getting really pissed off in this dream i'm like i am the elite i swear <laughs> you know it's like my secret desire to like rule the world probably you know i'm like i'm meant to be in there like like every entrepreneur feels like excluded you know from like the cool kids right at some point so this is me like that and i'm like oh so i like i like jump over this big fence right and i'm like walking on like planks like wooden you know how like sometimes in in um in like a garden, you would just have like a wooden plank that's just laying down. Yeah. You know? So I'm just like walking up these wooden planks and I get up to this big mansion and there's this room and this door in the back and it's glowing red, you know, like pure freaking evil, you know, like you're just like, oh, God. So I'm like, oh, you know, I got to get in there. I got to mess those guys up. Right. And I open and there's this like dark little room. It looks like a little theater with like, you know, like 10 seats in it. Right. And they're like, you have some crazy, like weird movie on. And they all look at me like, Whoa, who's this coming in? And I remember like kicking my shoes off and my shoes, like once I threw them off, like they became alive and they started running around with the other shoes of the other people, like playing like, like pets, bro. And, and, and I remember going in there and they were like, well, and they were like, welcome back. And they handed me a, a, like a chalice <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like, what is, what, the, what is that about? I'm like, what, <laughs> what? Well, that so was what, weird. What, what do you think? I think that's the IRS right there. I think those guys are the IRS, bro. <laughs> that's, I, that's all I'm saying. Just I wait, found them. Just wait until Neuralink becomes a thing. And then the IRS is like, yep, we're going to just, we're going to need access to all the Neuralinks. And, and they're just hijacking. Oh, no, that is going to be not good. That is not going <laughs> to be a good time. It's going to be a bad time. That's why I'll go off the grid, man. 
That's where I'm like, yep, I'm out. I'm just gonna. Where is off the grid? Where is off the grid, man? Avocado farm in Peru. No, bro. No, you're gonna have to go to another planet, dude. Off the grid (laughs) is like outside of the galaxy, bro. I'm telling you. Like the the Galactic Federation, you gotta get out. You gotta go and fucking the outer rim. You gotta go to the outer rim (laughs) territory and start doing slave labor and get pot races, and then you win against the fucking. You're the only human who has enough midichlorians. To go win the pot race until some guy, some old eccentric guy finds you and says, come with me, you're going to become a monk. And then you're going to be in front of this crazy monk elite uh, circle of leaders. And they will tell you you're too old and you're too scared and fear leads to anger and anger leads to the dark side. And then you're like, but I really want to be one of you cool monk people. And then they tell you you're not allowed to love, but then you fall in love with this beautiful princess that is also a leader and she's super beautiful. And then you fall in love with her and you need to protect her. And then you keep being awakened by dreams of losing her. And it's pulling you further to the dark side, just like everybody told you. And she's pregnant with twins and you almost kill her. And then you kill the master that has taught you everything. And he said, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance to the force and not join the dark side. And then you join the dark side anyways, because you're so scared. And you descend down and you almost kill him, but then he kills you almost. But through the wonders of technology, you still remain alive. And then you think your wife died, which she did. But before she did, she bore two children, one son and one daughter. But you can't find them until you confront your son. And he's become a very powerful monk. And he wants you to believe in the good. But you are so dark. Your heart turns so dark. But then you fight against him. You want to kill him. And then you want that he kills you. And then just the moment where he is about to kill you, he turns you to the good side. And you die with love in your heart for the first time in many, many decades. Maybe maybe that's what's going to Maybe happen. that. And, and that, yeah. my friends, is the script for Kung Fu Panda 7. <laughs> 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 I, I was I, it seemed familiar to me must have been kung fu must, must have been kung fu panda seven gen, gentlemen it's Wait, gonna be a good six, one i recommend you see it the yeah. only way to get a notification for that movie is, is to subscribe to max's podcast and watch it religiously <laughs> and just disney plus. It. you know it's cool like I, I went to disneyland and you get a you get a subscription to disney plus for free when you go to disneyland oh, oh, oh. Like three months or something yeah That's they still try deal. to want me to sign up for my free three months i'm like nah i got <laughs> There I you got go. pirated shit. It's much better. <laughs> Bro, we have like everything, man. We're so, we're so, but it's crazy to look back at our lifestyle now compared yeah. to that of like kings, you know, like kings and princes and aristocracy. Cool. It's crazy. We got way cooler lives than some motherfucking king 2000 years ago. Dude, way you gotta like go life. fight your neighbor country yeah. and like. That sounds terrible. I'm good. Like I'm good, yo. Like no offense, I mean, dude, but like you yo, got, you don't got electricity. You're sitting in your fucking throne on a on a wooden chair or a stone chair, and the only thing you got is like people to entertain you. Fuck that. You, you, you know, I'd rather play PlayStation you know the, is much cooler than some fucking court jester. You, play you, that's what I was gonna say. It's a jester, bro. You, you just pay a guy. Imagine paying a guy battle. to come dance. There's no is rock. that still legal? It's not invented yet. Yo, our so jester like, still I want to hear some music, and it's just some fucking guy like on a flute. Yo, I'm, Yo, I'm looking up there's higher. There's no Metallica. There's no Lamb of God. There's no. There's no In Flames. There's no Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple. All don't exist yet. Genre. The instruments don't even fucking exist yet. You have no good music. It's fucking cold all the time. You constantly eat the same food. I ate ice cream while I was driving our Mercedes. With like fucking yeah, Corchester. I would. I, I, I you could. There wasn't even no ice cream as a fucking king two thousand years ago. There was no was ice terrible. cream. I'm I'm, I'm slurping the ice cream, driving my car in fuck the fastest speed a human has ever experienced. Like two thousand years ago, the fastest speed you could experience as a human is either you fall and die, or you or ride a donkey, a horse, you or have a like donkey, a donkey. Or fucking horse. I'm driving faster than any king 2000 years ago has done in more com- in a more comfortable chair than they've ever sat in eating ice cream that has more sugar and more taste hijacking my fucking neurological brain yeah. than this motherfucker has ever tasted the, the tastiest shit this guy ever tasted was fucking honey no, it's cold. fuck honey the ice cream that I had the double caramel magnum thing fuck yeah <laughs> oh, that's that good. shit was Don't engineered slap, that shit was literally engineered 
by marketers to hijack my brain so I want more. That's how fucking good it is. You know what I mean? It's not like, this is sweet. Let's sell it to the king. This is like, there's been fucking scientists and marketers fucking figuring out the taste of the goddamn ice cream for half a year to be like, yeah, what if we put like some sprinkles of like some chunky pieces over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Imagine imagine what you and I would do if they gave us that task. They're like, give us the most addictive ice cream ever. We'd be like, oh, let's go. Let's try 22.5%. How many of the how many of the hundred test subjects are gonna get addicted? Okay, well, one person gets more addicted if we put it to 22.27%. Okay, we would be the, we that. would be the Pablo Escobar of ice cream. Of ice cream. <laughs> we should make an ice cream business. What, man. what are you trying to say? You cannot bring, bring these into the country. Everybody, you cannot bring ice my ice cream into country. We'll, what problem? We'll smuggle it in a in a U boat yeah, in a model. submarine. Fucking ice cream smuggling in a fucking submarine. <laughs> oh my god, bro! Hey, that's gonna be an explosive ice cream. Yeah. Oh, sorry, an implosive. Yeah, implosive. <laughs> ah, Let's go. But hey, really? No, like the shit that we're eating has been engineered. It's not just like I mean, look at this thing I'm drinking. Yeah, I'm drinking this thing called Ghost Energy Warhead Sour <laughs> Watermelon. This shouldn't even be legal. We're going to find out and, and, and we're going to find out that this stuff's really bad for you, by the way, at some point. I'm just letting like, you know, like, like no offense. Gave, don't. If, if you gave this to a medieval peasant, he would die. He would never have anything. He In his whole life, he will have never tasted something as intensely as this shit. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. This has been oh, yeah. engineered. It's not just like some fucking old lady harvesting. The <laughs> you give him like a little, bread. you give him this one can, like you come back. He's yeah, like a yeah. lord. This He's like the lord engineered. of the kingdom. Your food, your drink has been engineered literally to make it taste as good as humanly possible. But, but, but see, it has this. It has this key component. It's legendary energy. Is the key. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know what's in that. What the marketer smoked. To come <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what that we is. Need an, but... We need an adjective for energy. Legendary. <laughs> legendary. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> you Let's promote go. it. <laughs> Put it on the can, guys. Put it on the can. Just put it Get on in there. there. I got no... <laughs> Yeah, no artificial colors except on the actual can. <laughs> like what? About to say, except for the green stuff. <laughs> so, Yo, you give that to like a peasant in like the medieval age, and you come back like a week later, they're like the lord of the <laughs> entire thing. You know, they're like, I am more efficient. They figured shit out. Yeah, <laughs> they like have they animals that work for them. You know, they like Why gave it to the wheel on the donkey and have him run around to plow the fields, man. Let's go. <laughs> God, they, it's easy. <laughs> donkey named Fred. Fred the donkey is going to save us, guys. Dangling yeah. in front of the donkey. Boom. Uh, infinite energy, bro. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> but it's a good you, point. We live yeah, better. He, they have like electricity and shit out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, he's like, man, I was so motivated. <laughs> <laughs> and then it runs out and he starts like fiending like um oh, you know he's like oh man oh gosh oh geez oh what do i do <laughs> that's too good it's oh, beautiful man and then we forget we tend to fucking forget that we live in a fucking magical literally in a magic wonderland of there's shit flying through the fucking air there's fucking you 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 open the tap water, water comes out. You go to the fucking store. You got infinite food. You can't eat the food in the store. You can eat a one percent of the food in the store if you really put effort in it. You know, it's yeah. all there at our fingertips. Information, entertainment, music. Like you can listen to any song that has ever been recorded within thirty seconds. You carry the shit around with your phone. You got instantaneous travel, instant fucking. T- you're you're in the West Coast. Excuse me, of the USA. I'm in freaking Austria in the heart of, all, of fucking Europe. Boom. Dude, 20 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't even have internet here. Now we got high speed internet. I'm fucking recording this in HD, instantaneous communication. We live in a fucking magical Narnia wonderland. And here you sit fucking depressed. You're fucking yeah. simping around. You're beta cuckings, pl- pl- complaining, blaming the government, blaming so and so. This guy's an asshole. This guy's an asshole. This dating game is rigged. I can't get rich. The, the everybody's oppressing me. Poor me. Blah blah blah. Fuck you. Fuck you. Not my fault. Poor me. Shut the fuck up. You are in a magical wonderland where it's never been easier. 
to make money. You don't even need to leave your fucking house. You know, fucking 100 years ago, what you have to do to make money? You have to fucking build a coal mine and hire fucking coal, coal miners, miners and, and suppress then, them. You have to suppress them too. You don't have to suppress them. And then they, they make a union against you and you fucking have to go somewhere. Then you have to trade to a thousand years ago. If you wanted to be rich, you had to be a trader. Like you would have to trade with your little cart of fucking goods. You have to go on the goddamn pervert literal silk road. You might die. Maybe not. Maybe you get your head chopped off by some fucking desert Bedouin fucking villagers. You'd be fucked. And it may be if you're lucky, you're rich. But if you come too rich, the king doesn't like that because you're taking away, you're shining away from his light. So he's just going to kill you, take all your money. That was nothing. And nowadays, you're fucking sitting there. You're dicking around. You, you can build a fucking business out of nowhere, make thousands of fucking dollars. Fuck it. I'll move to Thailand. I'm renting a fucking villa in Thailand. Oh, do you like beef? Guess what? You got Kobe beef right there. Oh, you don't like the Kobe beef? You prefer beef from fucking New Zealand? Yeah, we got that here too. Oh, guess what? Here's infinite amounts of alcohol, infinite amounts of water, sugar. There's a gym right there for you to work out. Oh, you don't like the temperature, buddy? Press this fucking <laughs> button and it increases for two degrees. God damn it. And then here you are. You're sitting there and you're fucking complaining. It's never been fucking easier yet. People are unhappy than ever before. You need to suffer. That's the secret. Things are easier than before, yet people are unhappier than before. Why? Because they're not suffering enough. If the it's suffering true. is not bestowed upon you by a king, by fucking evolution, by the fucking conquering tribe that is going to invade you, you have to create suffering yourself. How do I create suffering for myself to keep me happy? I go to the fucking gym. If it's my, it was my fucking birthday on Monday, I hit that fucking leg day. And everybody knows I hate leg day. Why? Because it's fucking leg day. OK, I do this because I like a specific amount of suffering. It keeps me happy. It keeps me sane. I work hard. Even if I say, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to eat the fucking ice cream and play Hogwarts Legacy. I'm going to say, shut the fuck up. Suffer a little bit more. Deserve that ice cream. Deserve that fucking And, Hogwarts and then Legacy. go play Hogwarts Legacy. And then I go and play then fucking Hogwarts Legacy. And then be a magical wizard. Exactly. Okay? And that's the, that's the key. But everybody nowadays says, oh, if it's uncomfortable, then don't fucking do it. Here's your participation trophy. Oh, you feel offended? Then it's their fault, not fucking yours. You know what? Go ahead and offend me. It makes me fucking stronger. It hurts me and it makes me happier in the fucking long run. Oh, Yo. this is difficult to do? Give me more of that shit. Give me more of that pain. Give me more of that difficulty because that teaches my dopamine to only release when I'm doing cool shit. And that gets me in this nice balance where i'm getting dopamine and where i'm only feeling happy and content when i've built something i've helped someone i've done something creative instead of getting dopamine when i fucking watch the next episode or hit the next fucking ice cream and when i do yeah. eat that ice cream is that much sweeter because i'm not used to it and it's flipped it's flipped right the average person you tell them we, we, we were on a call the other day with a partner and he's like hey i want to like do 30 videos for this next launch and then you know what i felt i was like Yes. Oh, yeah, let's go. yes. I was like, I like, I was like, I had into that. Like, I was like, yes. And I think about that. Like the average person would be like, oh man, I really got to write these 30 videos now. Fuck. You know, you guys like, it's sure. like people got it all backwards. And you mentioned something like these guys that say the game is rigged. Like this is such a big takeaway. Okay. All, all you guys that are on this like dating adventure, right. Figuring out who you are as a man in the dating manosphere and, and, be, and being able to, to realize yourself in that capacity with women, um, the first thing you have to understand is the man is the one who sets the frame for the, for the entire existence of him as a man when it comes to women. And what I mean by that is, you, you know, we say, oh, the game is rigged. They like Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio better than me. Of course. And they should. And yeah. they should. Women are smart. Women are amazing. Women, you know, I am, I think where a lot of uh, men go wrong is they resent women. They're, they're secretly afraid and they resent women. Yep. And you have to have a great sense of admiration for women because you wouldn't exist if it wasn't for a woman, would you? Um, unless you were grown in a lab or something. So I think it really starts there is men have a sense of resentment towards their own place and their own inability to be the type of man that they wish they could be. They secretly, do, they, not even secretly, like they do wish they could be that guy that women like. Um, but What's preventing them from doing that is a lack of ownership. It's a lack of transparency. It's a lack of being able to look at yourself in the eye and go, I have not done in my life those things that are bespoken of someone 
who has a healthy relationship and a beautiful partner and an amazing relationship with himself and, and, and creates experiences and things that high level people want to be a part of, they say it's rigged. Of course it's rigged. Otherwise, what would be the point? Yeah. What would be the point? There would be no point. Like yeah. the only way that you can win the game is by playing. It's not rigged so that I think there's a misnomer. It's like, it's not rigged in a way where if you don't get good, you don't win. You like, you can get really, really good and you can win bigger yeah. than ever, yep. bigger than ever in, in existence of also like, you, you know I mean? I've worked with literally every single top pickup artist on earth. So I'm not like, it wasn't just like I was, you, you know, in that I, I got to pick the best from, from, from you and from Julian and from Owen and, and mm. fr from, from every single person, I kind of got to pick like that person's really good at that and combine them and synthesize them into a singular framework. And that really comes down with the fact that, uh, yo, it's, it's not a responsive game. It's not a responsive game. It's not a, oh, I really hope I get laid or I really hope I get a girlfriend or no, 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 no. Like you, you wake up and there's a, there's a quote, I think it's might be Johnny Cash. It's like a happy man is a man who wakes up in the morning and spends his day doing whatever it is that he wanted to do and, and goes to bed. Like that, that's literally, it's like literally that simple. So if what you want to do is play video games and, and waste your life, then that's what your life's going to look like. And that's, yeah. and that's the type of person you attract. Um, so put all the weight on yourself a hundred percent of the weight on yourself. And the next time that you find yourself in a social situation or at a nightclub or at a cafe, and you see uh, a, an, an attractive person that you're attracted to um, come with the value, you know, communicate the value of who you are through your authenticity, through your groundedness, right? Like, like be that Viking, be that person that makes them go, wow, is this actually a man who is aware of himself and is willing to say, you know what? I have this thing where I'm really afraid that I'm going to overcompensate here. Like, like, like my thing is um, my mom moved away from my dad when I was eight and I felt like my dad did nothing wrong. And he, he, he's a hard worker. He's very diligent. He prioritizes work. Right. So my whole um, dichotomy throughout my life is I love, you know I me, mean? I love working. I love getting stuff done, but I find that if I over prioritize that I will be reliving the pattern where I will be neglecting my partner in a capacity to actually sabotage those relationships. So that's something that I've had to communicate very directly to any partner that I'm with. It's like, hey, I have that as part of my history. That affects me in a way where I might sabotage my work because I'm so happy that I found someone that I can spend time with in an authentic, in an authentic way and vice versa, right? I, I might go in the other direction. And that allows for discourse. That allows for things to happen. That allows for someone to say, wow, this person's real. This is a real human being here. And that is somebody I want to get to know further. And then it's up to you to go and say, hey, you know what? We're going to go, we're going to go to Tulum. Do you want to go to Tulum? And so if you're not creating that experience for yourself, like, like what do you expect to happen, right? Like you're not there to go to a bar, like going to a bar or going to a nightclub with the idea that like, hey, I'm going to get laid tonight is a low level um, that's low level thinking. I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know, like that's very, very, very low level thinking. What you should be doing is saying, Hey, I've had an amazing day. I'm going to go pop out for an hour. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just meet that person. That's really excited to meet me tonight. That'd be really cool. And, and you, and you pop out and you have these amazing interactions and it's not about you anymore. It's not about, it's never been about you going and like, you know, having a one night stand or something that's such a low level. It even has like kind of an icky low level energy yeah. to it. And a lot of people are really attached to that. And the irony of the whole thing is, is only when you rise yourself to that state of like, like oh, who do, who do like chicks love? They're like, yo, I've met this guy. He's so spiritual. He's a shaman, but he's also like a daddy. He's like a daddy shaman. You know what I mean? Like they're attracted to DJs. They're attracted to famous artists. Why? Because those, those men are congruent. They're congruent. They know who they are and mm -hmm. they will, they're willing to live life and live on the edge. And like Max, like you mentioned, like us entrepreneurs, we're weird. We're weird. We're the odd ones out. We're the ones that society said, bad boy, get back in your box. Why are you out of the box again? Get back, get back, get back. And, and uh, hopefully those of you guys that are listening to this podcast still have understood that like you're, there's no room and there's no place in the box for you anymore. Like there's, there will never yeah. be a place in the box. You're outside of the box. Yeah. with people like Max, with people like myself. And, and we're running wild, bro. We're running wild. We're running the streets and, and things are crazy. But if you're running the streets, 
then you have to be competent. You have to be precise. You have to be diligent. You have to show up for your brothers when your brothers need you. You have to protect your partner. If somebody's weaker than you, you protect them. You don't abuse that. You protect those people. So um, the, the requirements for perseverance of the character archetype completely transform the moment that you jump out of that box. You now have to be 100% self-accountable. You can't, you can't, you can't be 99%. You have to be a hundred percent self-accountable. Yeah. You have no other choice. Otherwise somebody's going to take a percentage of that accountability and they're going to use that to push you back into that box. Yeah. And so, um, I just kind of want to go in that little rant. Cause I, I find a lot of men, um, struggle with that and they, they play a victim. They play this victim role and they can continue doing that for many months or many years. And what they really need to do is stop and they need to evaluate who they are, who they want to be. And they need to make a conscious decision to be that person now, not, not when they get the money. You know, you have to be that person now. You have to see it before it exists and you have to embody it and embrace it and live it before it exists because it will never exist unless you do that. Exactly. And the moment that you accept that it will never exist unless you do that is the moment you start to do it. And that, uh, that was wonderful you said, man. I really thank you for this rant. And that's exactly to, to add on top of that, that is exactly the problem with things like woke culture. Not exclusively woke culture, but anything that takes away responsibility from you and that says, you know what? It's their fault. You're not successful because you're oppressed. You're not this and you're not that because of the bad people, because of the racists and the sexists and the transphobics. Look, I've been I've been working with people now for fucking 20 years. And maybe not 20 years now, like 15, 16 years. I've met thousands of people, you know, through my uh, uh, dating coaching times, through clients, through being a, a coach and so on and so forth. Nobody, absolutely nobody that I've ever met is actually hateful against anybody. The average normal fucking person has no fucking problem with people being gay, people being homosexual, people being transgender. Nobody has a fucking problem with that. Nobody has a fucking problem with that. It becomes a problem when you're being told that you are the poor victim and you're not where you want to be and you're not happy because this and that is violating your rights and so-and-so speech is offensive. What that does is, look, I, I want people to, to be who they are as much as the next guy. But the problem is it takes it outsources responsibility. It outsources fucking responsibility. You're not where you want to be because you don't get enough chances and this and that guy is taking away money from you and it's the rich people who are oppressing you and so on and so forth. It's good in its, in its essence to say, hey, it should everybody should have equal rights. But it's been pushed to such a degree now where it's like, well, it's not my fucking problem because it's so-and-so's fault that I'm not making money. It's so-and-so's fault that I'm not fucking happy. If you're not happy, that's on you, buddy. <clears throat> That's yeah, and there's fucking you because and you, you become such a happy. pariah and you become yes. such a pariah if you push against this thing. And, and it's cool. We do, we do, you know, like we have the, we, we have some movements against it, you, you, you know, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, uh, you know, you, you can, you can, you can name, name a, a decent list of warriors, true warriors who are dedicated to maintaining uh, the fabric of reality. I literally, I literally don't even view it anymore as like just vocal culture. I actually view it as like, they're trying to untangle the fabric of reality so that they can try and put it back together their way. Mm. And like, it's not their place. Like, like I'm like, uh, as an individual, if I want to judge somebody or hate somebody or love somebody, that's my choice. Yeah. As an individual. And, you know, you know, this comes down to like a control parameter. It's like, you know, the, what do they call television when, when they stream television? They call it television, what television programming. <laughs> television programming they're programming you right so so you have the 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 psychological gaslighting that's happening right now where the moment that you say no 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 hold on stop unwinding our fabric of reality we actually like our reality because we still have water and air and things seem to be actually progressing in a positive direction uh we like that um so stop doing that and, and they built a system that says, no, no, you're bad. You're the bad one. It's the ultimate gaslight. I think it's one of the yeah. biggest gaslights that's ever happened. It's like, no, yeah. you're the bad one because you're trying to do, uh, actually connect with things that are real and, and tangible. We have hypotheticals, but we have a machine behind these hypotheticals is make, it's going to make you think that they're real. And then the other real things are going to seem like they're hypothetical make-believe. So 
Um, the way they've done it is, is genius. The way they've done it is, is mind-blowingly genius. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fantastic case study of human psychology. The way that, um, you, you know, like I, I would get into it uh, back in LA quite frequently over like the gun, the gun debate, right? Like wow. I've, I have, I have quite a few firearms. I have quite a few firearms, you know, to put it lightly. And I have yet to have one of them go and grow legs and do something crazy. So uh, it's, I keep watching it. I'm like, is it going to go? They said these things are dangerous. Is it going to go do something? And it doesn't seem to be doing shit. It seems like like they're lazy, you know, like it's not happening. So, you know, you have a, you met, you have a mental health issue. Mm. You have that situation. So let's address that situation and, and look at it. And um, everything's so misconstrued. It's very easy to like, like politicians do this all the time. They, they take two concepts, they throw them in a pot, they mix them up and they bring them back out. And they're like, look, your concept that's been dirty now is totally not white. Like you take black and white, you put it together, you mix it up. Look, it's gray. Like, yes, it's gray, but it wasn't gray before. They're like, it's always been gray. And they're like, <laughs> like you know, it's, it's like sociopathy, like at the highest level. So, um, and, and then it makes you sociopathic because you realize like, okay, if I want to compete with these people, these people are so crazy. Like you have to be a Donald, like uh, that's why I think Donald Trump's so, so, so nuts, man. Like, like so wild. He's just like, you know what? Like I'm in there, like get, go, like I'm orange. You know, uh, I will make orange people like it's great. It's it's, it's amazing because it shocks people. It's the reality into going like, uh oh, hold on that fabric. Like, uh oh, like maybe all this stuff that we thought was accurate wasn't as accurate as we thought. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. And there's a great quote about this. I, I love this quote. It's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. Oh, 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 oh shit. What is that from, man? Who said that? Let me. That is a great question. Let's look. Let's it's, look that it's up. It's probably like, <laughs> it's like Donald Trump. Dictator. It's like some fucking crazy mass murders dictator. <laughs> then convincing them that they've been fooled. Man, it's so true. Yeah. T Tucson Metro Chamber, Arizona's Prop 200. Wait, what? Whoa. Well, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. That sounds about right. Yep. Mark Twain. Great. Let's go. Dropping them. Yeah, I, I should have a list of quotes, you know, like like on a on a billboard when I do this next time. And I'll just drop like I'll have like a timer, you know, and it'll be like five minutes has passed. Time to drop quote. <laughs> boom. You know. So boom. Yeah, it's it's a vibe. Yeah, I've been doing these like crazy, like hip hop like motivational rants and raps bro it's been so fun it's just what's like your, con what's up what's your what's the secret behind your energy coffee nootropics uh, good sleep obsession obsession okay obsession yeah complete complete and other obsession with milking every minute of life mm. like yo it's gonna end one day man and that sucks god i hate that you know okay. like so so that's that's like the core of it um Good sleep, you know, like good good sleep, gym, cold plunge, highly recommend cold plunge, sauna, jacuzzi, um, nootropics are good. Uh, having your macros dialed in, like just basic Ooh, macro yeah, food, yeah. you know, like I have all my food get delivered to my door. I pop it in. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't touch it. Everything's pre-prepped. So um, that, yeah, I just, but I think, but if you have all that, if you don't have that obsession, like I can't, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't wait to get on this podcast with you like and i wanted to make it great like you know, like you know we hopped on it and like i'm like no you know what we're no we're not gonna we're not gonna do this half ass we're i'm gonna go and we're gonna make it great because we only get one chance to do this one you know what i mean we only get one chance to do this one so we got to make it awesome so i think it's that it's being able to to embrace life and look at the magic of life and go oh my god i freaking like yo the average person like we're talking about magic like the human body like yo what bro the fact that you and i can even comprehend this interaction and our eyes work and like we hear, like how does an ear work? Like, you know what a good, a good example of this is? You ever see a vinyl record? Like like one of those old vinyl records, yeah, the black yeah. ones? Yeah. Bro, how does that work? Like, it, With it's the a needle? Like what? The needle goes what? to like micro and it creates the fucking And it creates song? a symphony? What? Like what? Like, like I didn't know that you could just, if you could put your fingernail on it and you and hear, you'll hear it. it. And you're like, yeah. wait, what? Did you know yeah. that? You, I'm like, wait, that's you, that's joking, right? That's fake. No, you put your fingernail on it and you hear the song. What? Yo, if that's not magic, bro, I don't know like what is because that's crazy. 
You know, you take you so take true. like an entire album, like the Gorillas album, and you put or a Radiohead, freaking Radiohead album yeah, on a yeah. disc spinny. They're like, we have disc spinny. It make best album ever. You're like, what? Like it's wild. It's I'm wild. We live we're in living a- in a magic fucking realm. We do indeed. True, true. I mean, what if what if they what if they like in fucking ten years they're like, hey, listen, guys, this whole technology thing, no. It's actually just magic. Like, you know, because like a, a laser disc, like a DVD, like, do you uh, like, oh, yeah, it's a laser and the laser reads the data on the backside of the it's CD. Insane, Shut bro. the fuck up. Maybe they're just like, yo, it's actually not technology. It's just magic. We don't understand it. We just yo, we should just up. do that. You know, what yeah, we should yeah. do, bro. We should create like a crazy AI thing and just be like, nah, like, we're not going to tell you how it works. It's not because we magic. don't know. It's we magic. have this owl it's actually magic. We have this owl. We tell the owl, like, listen, we got to go to Hogwarts, dude. And it just makes it happen. And we just like, it's just like this big inside joke that we have. And, and we just never explain it to people and they, they're never able to reverse engineer it because it's just too good. And it is literally, they're like, it's the only instance of magic ever. And then we go, go on, we go on that show. Uh, we go on Penn and Teller and then we fool them. <laughs> And then it's certified magic for real. We're going to get you. invited to Oprah. She's like, so magic is real now, huh? Yeah. It's real. We're like, hell oh, yeah. The first thing magic ever did is this AI tool for marketing. <laughs> oh my God. We make it where we can like transform ourselves into any person at any time and stuff. Uh, <laughs> like, it's oh, going to be too I good. I actually don't look like this. I'm actually a dwarf. I just made the magic make me look like a handsome white guy. It's a total deep it's fake, just, man. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a deep, good time. It, oh, oh, those glasses, they actually are not real. Just magic created them. Yeah, just, your reality is not real. You're dreaming. We just I tell Oprah she's dreaming. Here. I actually instantly transported here, but I had a clone Boom. that there was also. created by magic that took the flight, just it so you guys flight. don't freak out. There we go. My name is Donald Trump. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually oh. Donald Trump. I, he's right now. I'm the same person. Oh, did you see the thing about the, yo, this guy fucking tricked the internet into thinking that he's Harry Styles. This Wait, shit was what? great. Yo, he took a bunch of photos of himself. And by the, by the way, I'm supposed who, to have another Harry call in like Style? four minutes. I don't minutes. even know who the hell. What? He's like a, a pop artist, like a Justin Bieber, right? Type of thing. All right, all right. So, so like uh, he took photo, he went out in public, took photos of himself. And then posted articles that was like Harry Styles spotted at the mall <laughs> in Virginia. And he, and he SEO'd his own articles. And Damn. put it out, and so people would like run up to him, like, "Oh my God, you're Harry!" It's like because in the art, like, it just shows how gullible people are. They they don't know, right? If you see an it's article about somebody, cool you see people. their face, like, you're like George Clooney, like you kind of know who he is from the movies, but like I've never met George. Like, what if he's just a different guy? They just used the model the whole time. Like, who knows? Who knows? Have you seen this? Have you seen this guy? This uh, uh, Lionel Messi lookalike who slept no, with what? twenty uh, twenty five women. Claiming that he's messy, <laughs> king, king, and I'm like, legend. Even that much, you know? <laughs> legend, bro. Let's go, let's go. Like, oh, you look, you claim to look like that messy. At twenty five is all you got. Like, I think, like, I think you, yeah, I think you'd, you'd, you'd rack up a higher he, number faster. How shitty, shitty does your game need to be, man? I mean, I don't know, I don't know over what time span he did that, but I mean, actually, probably over a lot much longer than in two days. So yeah, definitely. Uh, well, here's the deal. You know, the game of life is like a game of chess. So make your first move, step up, do your best, ooh. count your blessings, pick ooh. your mess up, use your mind, manifest your best self. Better this, better that, better stay ahead of the pack, but it ain't the money that you lack. Matter of fact, there ain't nothing that you lack. So let's get you back on track. Health, ooh. wealth, happiness, imagination, trust the process, stay the course, have patience, search deep inside and find the power to conquer ancients, pave your way, those stones, the gifts you came with. We're awake, not brainless. Use the pen, not the stainless. Redefine what your name is. Hold up. Did I just go off? Or maybe I should pick the flow up. I'm going back to back on this track like a co-op. How are you going to win if you ain't even going to show up? Your life, the one thing you're supposed to be in control of. Boom. Yo. Hey, let's go rapping let's, going on here on the pod as well yo let's go let's go yo i got you another like call in like a minute oh um, sorry no you're did good you, uh, do, 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 do you want to do a wrap-up thing yeah yeah no, I, where can look, where can people find you what's your gram what's your website what's 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 in store yeah just just at mvk biz on um on ig at mvk biz you can Send also look up, some love 
Yeah. And at, uh, you, can, you can look up Hustle System, like the Hustle System on YouTube. If you want crazy AI videos, Great we're doing crazy videos. stuff. We're breaking down, like I'm doing this um, series on how to build a better business. Cause I found that there wasn't really anything that talks about like team dynamics, hiring, firing, like it's all kind of spotty. You can like try and get an MBA to fig figure it out, but that's what we're putting together. So I'm really excited about that. Like how to create a culture where people are excited to show up that type of stuff, you know, build great products, have great marketing. That's really authentic and congruent with who you are. Um, so yeah, at MVK biz or uh, hustle system on YouTube. Check it out. My man. Part three drop in as well. At some point, let's do part three at some point, my man. And uh, dude, I love you, bro. Thank you so much for being an epic legend. Thank you for being on the podcast. And uh, let's do it again. I love you too, brother. I can't wait to give you a big hug in person. And thanks for having me on. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, sending you love, my dude. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace, yo. Bye-bye.